Hey YouTube, Cobra San here. With less than 0.05% of all classes that reach level 250 plus being Iliums, it is no doubt that this is one of the most unpopular classes in the game. But what makes this class, who is powerful and useful in bossing parties, so unpopular? That's what we intend to find out in today's video, why no one plays Ilium. Ilium is a class with a troubled start, being quite weak when first released. It has taken years of buffs to get him in a good spot power-wise and that's where he is today. It doesn't help that Ilium also possesses all three things that Maplers don't seem to enjoy that much. A stacking mechanic, a gauge and summons, usually one of those three are present in most unpopular classes. However, Ilium has gotten a lot more convenient to play over the last years while also keeping his unique playstyle. For example, he used to take reduced damage depending on how many stacks he had in the crystal above his head. Getting hit removed the stack and without stacks you were like a mage without magic art, paper mache, dying to as much as a slight breeze. However, this was changed and Ilium always takes reduced damage now, which was already a big plus for me picking up this character again. I really disliked that mechanic back in the day. Like always in this video, we're gonna go over the mobbing and bossing to see what Ilium's strengths and weaknesses are. Ilium is like the god of map control and that's no overstatement. This class is made for those maplers who want to find the perfect rotation using their entire skill set. Ilium has a battery that he controls and his attacks fire off in the direction of this battery, bouncing off of it, triggering skills and other attacks, while your javelin skill can also be fired off in any other direction. Your radiant orb will always travel to where the orb is, even if you're facing the other way, allowing you to for example fire that skill backwards. The same goes for your Longinus spear which also targets your battery. Because Ilium's skills work this way, placing your battery behind monsters is super important and while playing you'll have to reposition your battery to hit the monsters you want to. This is a way different playstyle than any other character in the game and you'll have to like it. Ilium really starts to shine after unlocking his fifth job skills, allowing him to for example place down a weaker version of his battery to bounce attacks off so you can attack two parts of the map at the same time with two different skills and the even more amazing warp gates. These gates really help this class by a ton, making it the god of map control, at least in my opinion. These gates function as portals, allowing you to move through them, buff your magic attack when you're around them, and they also attack nearby enemies. You can just keep going up and down through the portals, tossing your battery and attacks around. It works really well, but does require a bit of setup and experimentation with every map you train in. The portals don't have unlimited range either, and even though I'm still quite early, in the Arcane River area. It was just a matter of finding the right maps to trade in and then this class is freaking amazing. Ilium's summons aren't the greatest but they do help with mobbing and he can summon a big robot that does help a lot with mobbing. The only downside being a hefty 180 second cooldown on this skill. The skill automatically attacks in the direction of the strongest monster or the area with the most monsters and if both left and right have the same amount it attacks the way Ilium is facing which is also great. And if you want to have even more of a light show, you can use your crystal ignition skill to fire off a beam of light that reflects off your batteries, hitting for a huge amount of damage. So that's pretty cool. And then there also is your gauge. You can unleash special attacks using your gauge and once it's filled up, you grow your wings and can, for a short period of time, fly around the map using even bigger and stronger attacks. As you can tell, there are a lot of things going on with Ilium and the screen becomes quite messy like this without full skill transparency. But once you get used to managing all your skills, it really isn't all that bad in my opinion. But I do think that the amount of stuff happening and number of skills to keep in mind, that can be off-putting for some maplers for looking for a more simple playstyle. Ilium needs two different boost nodes from what I could find, so four in total if you want to reach max level on your important skills. He also benefits a lot from attack speed bonuses, which I am not using in this video. So if you are using for example green pots or decent speed infusion or plus one attack speed from your inner, this class will even feel and look a lot better better. Ilium does compensate you for the hard work with a good amount of damage though. Even with very little funding and notes, this class is pretty strong. It has huge map control and range on its attacks. It's very powerful and easy to grind on, albeit a bit more work than some of the other classes. The same thing can basically be said about Ilium's bossing. Ilium is very powerful and even with my Lynx and Legion set up for grinding, I was easily able to make a dent in Chaos Akum with very few stats. In bosses like Chaos Akum, Ilium his mobility also shines. It's a teleport class that can also fly for a short duration, which is super useful to avoid boss attacks. And you can just fly around while you're transformed as well, and your teleportation skill is just really good for avoiding most boss attacks. 
Ilium also has a 10 second party wide invincibility frame skill, which is super useful at end game bosses. And he has another short invincibility frame skill with his long genus zone attack. This skill does have a two minute cooldown though, and he does not have his own bind, so you will need to free up a note salt for that. Ilium is great at fighting stationary and slow moving bosses, as he can set up his portals and fifth job summons and batteries all around that and then just go to work on the boss. In bigger bossing maps with more mobile bosses like Magnus, Damien or even Kalos, things can become a little bit more tricky as those mobile bosses can dodge some of your attacks which makes you lose a little bit of DPS here and there. Ilium then has to reposition his batteries more often and it's just easier to mess up as well and lose DPS. I don't think the messing up part is an issue for most Ilium mains, but it is something that you have to get used to if you're just starting out on the class. I don't think I said it enough yet though, but Ilium really is giga strong. However, his unique playstyle with his battery, the gauge, the transformation and quite a few skills to keep in mind, he does feel a little bit less approachable compared to most other classes. Also, when the class was released, it was perceived as quite weak, which definitely did not help boost the popularity of Ilium. He he can still feel a bit clunky at times due to his battery mechanic. The only complaint that I had was that your stacks disappear if you don't keep up the Radiant Orb attacks. Like they go from 10 to 0. I wish they would just lower one by one to give you a bit more time to for example talk to Polo and Fritto when you're leaving a portal. But besides that, I don't think there's much wrong with this class, it just isn't for everyone. And with over 40 classes to choose from, I think that's fine. But what do you think of the Ilium class yourself? Let me know in the comments. And that was all for today, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, special thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Special thanks to Niels de Konek, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Riley Os, Terry Kim, Varese, Cody Mora, Wiley, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, Safronix, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, Knifesu, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, Digby, Vyra, Trevor, Michael Menchaka, Ratius, Justin Vale, Silvio Nato, Afterlord and Score MS, Striker Elk, Tidal One Fun, Radical Jaws, Riser Aryu, Sir Tito655, Matthias Simonson, PC Game Life, The Passenger, Martin Panzik, Kanra Cristalis, Ace Light, Mr. Narc, Ben Wolf, Max Bernhardt, Muka1017, BMB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Priscilla, Brandon Cam, Vake Botnet, Feko, Victor Sundstrom, Simak Only, Rashid Alharmudi, Glando Balavia, Gianfranco Condoron Canavero, Lucky Beats, Mathinu Def, Gummy Bullet, Lord Fazil, Spots D. Kaiser, Zunnen, That Archie Guy, Grogo, Gabriel Eck, Luis Bento Brandao, Dante Victory, Snafu Pop, Astia Villa, Tails Kurtzpet, and The Wolf Drake. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling!